uh, right now, the succession of uh, events that I see unfolding is that as soon as the dollar is dropped as the world reserve currency, we're going to see a couple, maybe two to three months of very hard turmoil in this country. Uh, it'll be around that same time period that a solution will be offered. And my guess is it will be a currency solution along the lines of an amalgamation between Canada, Mexico, and the United States. That may not be the case. They may just go full force into a hard global currency like the one Medvedev uh, showed, uh, you know, the little model world currency that doesn't really have any banking and it's just an idea at this point. But whenever that does happen, I think you're going to see even more people lose their homes, not be able to pay for insurance, whatever. It'll be a, a large bolster for more socialization of health care and other projects. What are your views on this, Luke? I mean, they want to destroy this economy to start the one world currency, the one world government. They're going to do it in one way or another, but they're very strategic about it, and they plan these things 50 years ahead of time, 40 years ahead of time. We have to be careful and try to be patient as well in resisting these things and set up things that will go against it. So I don't, I can't predict. I don't have, uh, you know, a magic here's, ball that's going to happen. But all I know is we got to prepare, we got to get educated, and we have to take action because if we don't, we're going to allow it to happen. Here's my argument against them actually calling it an Amero, and I, and I thank you for the call, J uh, Jake. It's that, you know, about a year, year and a half ago, I had one of the people that I, I went to uh, college with and did gr computer graphics with. He's married. Uh, he's very baseline. Someone had sent him a video of Hal Turner, the uh, admitted FBI informant and racist, uh, having the real, he had the real Amero coin. Remember, he had the real Amero coin in his hand. And I said to him, well, look, man, that's not a real coin. That's to try to provocateur people into, oh, my God, the Amero is real and this is it. And then they find out that that Amero coin isn't real. And then the idea of the Amero is then discredited. That's the turd in the punch bowl. So they may just do away with the idea for the Amero because too many people got hip to it. But that doesn't mean the same plans that were in the SPP documents aren't going to move forward. And we're talking to somebody that actually spoke to the former president of Mexico, okay, confronted him, Vicente Fox, and Vicente Fox was displeased that the SPP agreement had not been going forth as rapidly as he would have liked. And what was this agreement? It's the gutting of this country. It's four major super highways and new tra trade regulations between Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Can you talk about that briefly, Luke? Luke, are you still with us? It looks like we, we lost Luke. Uh, you know, what can you do? Uh, he, he's out in New York City. It's tough on the phone lines. Uh, we're just going to keep running through the callers. Maybe we can get him back on the line. Dave in Oklahoma City. Dave, you're on the line. Hey, Jason. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man? I wanted to, uh, before I condemn, I want to give some praise to you, Luke, uh, Rob. I mean, Luke reminds me of Alex Jr. with the bullhorn. It's great. Uh, I was actually on line holding for uh, Dr. Tenpenny on Friday mm -hmm. when you and Alex were communicating on the phone, and he was telling you, hey, duck into this place and duck in there, and all of a sudden you said, oh, wait, there's a, there's a, what's her name? Uh, Cindy Sheehan. Um, Cindy, thank you, thank you. Um, yep. and, and, and it was shocking because Cindy um, said, this is the country my son died for? Mm -hmm. It just hit me so hard, man. But before I condemned anybody, I wanted to thank you, and InfoWars had the best coverage. The police officers up in Pittsburgh, shame, shame on you guys. I mean, the, talk about a bunch of first. We first time that military weapons were used on protesters, not protesters. They're trying to make it sound like anarchists, Americans. First time military style weapons used on Americans. Uh, it was the first time a sitting president ever accepted the chair position on the UN. Uh, what's going on, Jason? Where are we going with this country? We are going into a globalist, fascist society where it is much like Orwell's 1984 wrapped in a brave new world. I mean, they're dumbing us down with the drugs, with the vaccinations, and, you know, truth is stranger than fiction, man. They are making black, white, and white, black, and just confusing everybody and trying to keep you in this left, right paradigm. Dave, I thank you for the call. 
Luke, you're back on the line. We lost you for a moment. I want to go back just a moment. We were talking about the SPP agreements. We were talking about your confrontation with Vicente Fox and how you had discussed with Vicente Fox that he he felt that the SPP was not going uh, far enough, quick enough, and that he would like it to see like to see it move more rapidly. Yeah, yeah. When I talked to Vicente Fox, he did tell me, yeah, there is going to be a North American Union, and it may not come as quickly as you think it is, but it's going to come sooner or later down the line, 10 years, 20 years ahead. So we got to understand these people are extremely patient. Vicente Fox pretty much poured his guts out to me saying that, yeah, he likes the idea of a one-world government. Yes, there will be a North American Union coming up in the near future. So we have to fight and resist that as much as we can and uh, just get out there and talk to these people so we know what's going on. Because the mainstream media doesn't ask these questions to these powerful individuals that rule our lives in secrecy. It's our job to get out there and break these breaking news stories about how these people are planning for a one-world government behind the scenes in secret, destroying our sovereignty. And meanwhile, after this big globalist meeting, what are the headlines all over? I mean, I have an Austin American statesman. In front of me, New World Order, G8 up to G20, Obama backs move to add China, India, Brazil to the ranks of top countries. Folks, it's right there in print. This is their propaganda term. The New World Order is something I discuss because it is on the agenda of the global elite, and it has been for centuries now. Tyrants have... Look what headline Fox News, you know, wrote. They wrote Barack Obama ushers in new world order. I mean, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not something we're making up. This is really happening in our lives, and until we stop it, we're going to be living in it soon. That's right. Let's uh, take another call. Let's go to Russ in Florida. Russ, you're on the line. Jason, how are you? Good. Good. Listen, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I thank God that... Uh, uh, you and your crew made it out of there okay, and you know, thank. I know Luke's got some uh, difficult times ahead of him, and uh, you know, I'm I'm glad he's physically okay, and I wish I could a offer him some uh, financial support, but he'll definitely have my prayers um, with uh, you know the battle that he's got to fight yet ahead. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I uh, I'm a pretty busy guy. I work full time. I also uh, um, run a blog. Um, for a minor or for a small political party uh, here in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I did a lot of paying attention to the news uh, Thursday, Friday, and all weekend. And one thing that struck me is, as far as the mass media was concerned, every report they gave about the, the happenings outside the G20 could have obviously, and I, you know, half of me thinks that it probably was written ahead of time <laughs> because they, none of it was true. You know, there were a lot of talking points that were given out there. I only saw the coverage sparsely as I moved in and out. I did pass Rick Leventhal of Fox News during the initial protest on Thursday uh, off on a side street far away from the majority of police where we had been corralled. And he was reporting on the military presence. But again, the media always wants to shape it. Oh, it's these bad anarchists or these anti-capitalists or these people that don't know what's going on. They don't want to talk about the Iraq veterans that are in there. They don't want to talk. I mean, that first day, there were tons of middle-aged to elderly Americans out there. I mean, Falun Gong had a huge presence. The Free Tibet people had a huge presence on those days. And they are just simply ignored, Russ. Yeah, and they're concentrating on the anarchists when there are people from all walks of life. I mean, what the media does, they make the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent. And they were reading off scripts and pretty much had everything they wanted to say, but that's why it's so important for activists to get out there and speak our message, not only interrupting their shows and getting it out there to the viewers, but also to the people out there. Because when we talk to the people out there through the bullhorn, there were mostly loving people that loved uh, when I was saying that we don't need to break stuff. We don't need to go against the police. We need to work with the hearts and minds of the people to turn this into a peaceful evolution and not a violent revolution. All right, let's move on to our next caller. Let's go to Eric in California. Eric, you're on the line. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Excellent. Hey, uh, big props to Luke. Um, boy, Luke, you have really come a long way. You're so much more articulate than when you first started out and thereby being so much more effectual than... Uh, I'd just love to see your evolution. 
Hey, thank you, man. We all grow and learn every single day. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. We all don't, but we all grow as human beings and individuals. As the longer we're in this, the more uh, you know information we get, gain and the more more things we know, and we love to share it with you guys. So thank you so much for that. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Man, I, I call into radio shows all the time, and I actually record them so that I can, um, you know, critique myself and, and do better and be more effectual the next time. But uh, I've got two things I want to bring up. One thing is the, the Dave Mustaine interview with Alex. I thought that was awesome. awesome. And uh, uh, I gave Dave a copy of Obama's Deception when he was still recording his new album. And uh, I didn't, I hadn't, I wasn't able to get a, a review from him, but uh, he, he's got his recording studio in my town. So, uh,